In our game, there are numerous different branches of tank research, ranging from easy tanks that are suitable for most players to very challenging ones. In this video, I will tell you about the most difficult branches currently available. These tanks are only suitable for experienced players as they require knowledge of all the game mechanics, such as how the spotting system works, how to shoot properly, and how to use armor effectively. In the near future, I will create a series of videos on how to become a professional player in World of Tanks Blitz. After watching this video, I recommend checking out my other video on how to improve your statistics. It will bring you closer to your desired goal and eventually you will be able to unlock the tanks featured in this video. Now let's get started. The first research tree in this compilation is the branch of American light tanks, with the Sheridan as its pinnacle. The branch starts with the tier 6 tank Chaffee, which don't recommend keeping in your garage. However, say a few words about it. It's a light tank that moves like a medium tank. It doesn't have any significant armor, and when facing a KV-2, you should pray to the gods. Now let's move on to the next tank in the research branch, the M41 Bulldog. It shares similarities with the previous tank, but it has better speed and maneuverability. It also has a faster firing gun. However, this tank is still considered average. The next tank, however, can be called interesting. You can keep this tank in your garage after unlocking it, it's the T-49. It's not particularly powerful, but it has one unique feature that makes it a very fun tank to play. It has a Gur that deals an average of 560 damage per shot and 780 damage with high explosive shells. Most beginners rush to unlock this tank first, but I strongly recommend against it. Even experienced players may struggle to utilize this gun effectively. Many moments depend on luck, but you need to understand the game you're playing. You may not penetrate an enemy at point-blank range or miss entirely, but if you're lucky, you'll have an incredible experience playing this tank. The penultimate tank before reaching the top of the branch is the T-92E1. It's not the full version of what you'll get at the end of the research tree. This tank is very similar to the Sheridan, and is considered the most toxic tank at Tier 9. It all comes down to its gun, which not only deals significant damage but also has good accuracy. In addition, this tank is fast and its armor is angled, both in the hull and the turret, allowing you to often bounce shots from opponents. This tank left me with only positive emotions. However, let's move on to the final tank in the branch, the Sheridan. At first glance, it may seem like an unremarkable tank. It used to have very overpowered missiles, but unfortunately, or fortunately, the developers took them away. Since then, people have largely forgotten about this tank. However, recently the developers gave it the best view range in the game, surpassing the previous record holder, the Vickers Light. The tank still has a combination of strong points, such as high damage per shot, 560, Cheat armor consisting of large screens all over the hull, making it very difficult to penetrate with HE shells, and almost impossible at high speeds. It also has a vertical gun elevation angle of minus 10 degrees in down, and excellent mobility. This tank is truly fast, and thanks to its small turret, it's great for earning the Kolobanov's medal. However, only experienced players should use this tank. It's not recommended for beginners. Now that we've covered the first branch, what's next? Next, I've chosen the research branch of the British tank destroyer FV-4005. The Challenger, a fast but fragile Tier 7 tank destroyer, opens this research tree. It has a fast-firing gun with 200 damage per shot, but other than that, the tank is not particularly interesting. It's a typical mediocre piece of metal. The same can be said for the tank one tier higher, the Charioteer. It used to be interesting, but the developers significantly nerfed it, and now it's just a tank that you'd want to pass through quickly. Its gun is worth mentioning, though, as it has gold Hess shells with 440 damage per shot. Overall, nothing too exciting. Let's continue, and now we have a truly cool tank, the Conway. Honestly, it's my favorite tier 9 tank and I will definitely research this branch on my new Twink account. Not just for the top tank, but for the tier 9 itself. Although the tank doesn't stand out in terms of characteristics, it performs well in random battles even to this day. There's something about it that makes it very interesting. Perhaps it's the gun with high alpha damage and Hess shells that deal even more damage at 670 points. 
You might think it's not a high value especially for a tier 9 tank destroyer, but believe me, this tank frequently breaks enemy modules. It's not uncommon for it to detonate ammunition racks. And if you shoot the rear of an enemy tank, 4 out of 5 shots will result in fires. It's also worth noting that all tanks in this research branch have additional consumables and provisions, the use of which significantly impacts the outcome of battles. Now let's move on to the crown jewel of the tree, the huge barn that houses the best autoloading gun in the game. With four shells dealing 410 damage each, it's capable of taking away a whopping 1640 hit points from an enemy in a single burst. But let's not forget about the availability of additional equipment. Statistically skilled players use accelerated shell reloading and improved accuracy setups on this tank. It's also important to equip it with a high explosive fragmentation shell to reduce damage from incoming HE shells. This compensates for the tank's lack of armor. Within less than 10 seconds, you can dish out 1600 damage. Wouldn't want to encounter it in a dark alley in the middle of the night. Want to remind you that once the channel reaches 3000 subscribers, I will hold a giveaway for several battle passes. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. The next tank will definitely surprise you, or rather its inclusion in this compilation. Allow me to introduce the British heavy tank FV215B. Let's start with the roots of this research branch. The Churchill at tier 5 is a very boring tank, slow and overall. I recommend using free experience to pass it. The next tank is also quite dull, but it already has decent armor for tier 6 and an excellent rate of fire. However, it's still very slow. If you enjoy playing in tournaments at tier 6, then this tank is definitely for you. Want to note that overall this branch in a sense is suitable for beginners. Included it in this top list solely because of the tier 9 and 10 tanks. Also, all tanks in this research branch have additional equipment and ammunition. At tier 7, we have the people's favourite, the Black Prince. It's an improved version of the previous tank, featuring incredible damage per minute and very sturdy armour. This tank is great for improving your win rate, especially if you play in a platoon with another Black Prince. If you encounter this tank at tier 6, the victory is 90% guaranteed. As for the next tank, it is one of the best free tanks at tier 8. When the developers buffed its gun, it started to be used actively in tier 8 tournaments. At some point, the developers even held a professional tournament at tier 8 instead of the usual tier 10. And that's when everyone began to use this tank. It's an improved version of the Action X, with higher alpha damage and damage per minute. The turret armor is also slightly better, and most importantly, you have the option to use new equipment on it. It's a very good tank for both beginners and experienced players. The same cannot be said for the next tank at tier 9, the Conqueror. Personally, I didn't like the Conqueror at all. It's slow and easily penetrable in the turret. However, starting from this tank, the main feature of this branch comes into play. High explosive shells with increased penetration. No, they're not a PR Emium Hess shells. That's why gold ammunition is not obsolete. The penetration of these high explosive shells is a whopping 170 mm, allowing us to penetrate even some heavy tanks frontally in the lower frontal area. It may seem incredible to penetrate heavy tanks frontally with regular Hess shells, but it's true. When first played it, I was very pleased with this. But the Conqueror doesn't have any other advantages. And finally, the pinnacle of this tree, the FV215B. Currently, it's the strongest heavy tank in the game, but only in the hands of an experienced player. The tank has a rear-mounted turret, which means you'll have to play it from a rhombus position or turn the tank to play it from the turret. However, the turret of this tank has excellent armor, unlike the previous tank. The tank has everything to dominate battles. Excellent mobility, decent hull armor, great turret armor, a comfortable gun with powerful high explosive shells, and let's not forget about the additional equipment and ammunition. This tank is far from being suitable for beginners, but don't worry, soon make a video about the best research branches for beginners. Lastly, let's talk about the best medium tank for statistics in 2023, and that's the TVP 5051st. In recent updates, developers made it so that all tanks start the battle loaded, which changed the gameplay strategy for some tanks. But when it comes to this tank, it manages to reach most positions at the start of the battle and deliver several shots to enemies who are leisurely moving to their positions. I really love finding positions to spot enemies at the beginning of the battle or even take shots at them. So in the near future, a video about such positions will be released. Believe you know what to do. As for the tech tree of this tank, it's a bit controversial. From tier 6 to 8, you'll be playing tanks with high damage per shot. 
these tanks are not very interesting, but you won't have any problems progressing through them. By the way, at tier 7, the top gun deals a massive 280 damage per shot, and at tier 8 it increases to 310. But starting from tier 9, we have the little brother of the TVP, the Skoda T-50. It already has a quite interesting auto-loading gun, not as impressive as the top tank in the branch, but you can still dish out a lot of damage with it. If tanks from tier 6 to 8 somewhat suited beginners, then at tier 9, beginners will start having problems with these tanks. If you're currently researching these tank lines or even have these tanks in your garage and your win rate is below 60%, strongly recommend putting these tanks aside for now. Playing with these tanks without experience can negatively impact your statistics and you'll only have negative impressions of these tanks. So let's postpone these tanks for later and focus on researching other tanks. By the way, would you like to see a video about the best research branches for beginners? Write your answer in the comments, read them all. Returning to the Skoda T-50, I want to mention that the tank has absolutely no armor. However, we have excellent mobility. Some players managed to achieve over 4,000 average damage on this tank, and that was before the developers changed the reload time. I think now you have an idea of what's going on here, let's move on. Finally, we've reached the end of this video, the TVP T-50-51. Let's start with the characteristics. The tank is similar in gameplay to its predecessor, but now we have not three but four shells in the drum. Additionally, the intra-clip reload time has been reduced from 2.5 to 1.5 seconds, which is very fast. The tank is capable of reaching speeds up to 60 km per hour and has become slightly faster in acceleration and more maneuverable compared to its younger counterpart. However, this tank didn't receive any additional armor, which is not surprising. Currently, this tank is considered the strongest in the game. Not only was it quite good even before the update, it was like a thorn in the enemy's side. You would drive up to the side or rear of the enemy, unload 1,240 damage in just 4.5 seconds, and quickly retreat because of its maneuverability. But now, players with this tank have the opportunity to be a thorn, not only in the rear, but also at the beginning of the battle. When you load into the battle on an E100 and calmly drive to a flank, suddenly shots start coming at you from nearby bushes, and you don't understand anything because only a few seconds have passed since the start of the battle. This tank is very toxic, but it's not a problem for me since it can be easily countered by a single Hesh shell from the FB 2155 183. Thank you for watching the video until the end. Goodbye.